I'm Bernadette from Migration Matters. Do most migrants come to Europe just for jobs? In this video, we have a closer look at root causes. And therefore, we talk to researcher Nazi Majidi. Hi, I'm Nasi Majidi. I'm the co-founder of Samuel Hall and affiliate researcher at Sciences Po Paris. She did a lot of her research in countries like Afghanistan, Eritrea, Somalia, and she knows what is actually really driving people to risk their lives to arrive in a place like Europe. There's an obsession about understanding the causes of migration and understanding the root causes. The causes, we know them. Uh, their conflict, their political insecurity and economic insecurity. Those are the root causes and they're mixed. So it's not someone fleeing just because of conflict or just because they want to find a better job. They wouldn't come all the way to Europe just for that. So in the case of Afghans, they've been refugees in Iran or Pakistan. Some of them come from Iran to come to Europe. Um, they leave their refugee status in Iran to become an irregular migrant in Europe. Why? Because in Iran, although they may have limited access to education and healthcare, they have no right to work. Uh, so that means that their whole future is compromised as they will never see a possible opportunity to integrate locally. And if they don't want to return, if they can't return because of conflict, then their only choice is to leave. Uh, so again, this is where you see that you don't belong just to one category. Afghans, Syrians, Eritreans, were refugees in a first country of asylum and have left it because that country didn't offer them the right that they're uh, entitled to. And again, it's important to remind that the right to work, the right to uh, gain um, access, gainful employment, is a right that is supposed to be refugees' rights in their country of asylum. And oftentimes that right is not given. Another fact that you have to keep in mind is that most refugees don't come straight to Europe. So this means they have been a refugee in another country before, mostly in their own region. And this is why when you have a look at statistics, you can still see that most of the migration is south-south, meaning staying in the region and staying in rather undeveloped countries. If you're an Afghan today and you desperately need a job, the first place you'll go to is Iran, where you can land a job within a week as a construction worker and send money back home. You won't come to Europe just for a job. But wait, I mean, the kind of job you can get as an Afghan in Iran is obviously illegal work. So if you work on a construction site, that doesn't mean that you have an official work permit. And this means if you are looking for long term perspectives and you want to um, provide for your family, then the only alternative you have is to go to a country where your rights as a refugee are accepted and you would get an official work permit. So what about the promise of social welfare? Is social welfare a strong driver that makes them choose to come to Europe? The social welfare discourse is one that comes up often. They're coming here to benefit from the social welfare is what we hear. Actually, they have no clue about the social welfare and academic research has shown that the social welfare is in no way part of the initial decision to migrate. They actually don't even know what a social welfare system is. In countries where you've had decades of war, there is no such thing as a social welfare system. They don't expect it. What they want is to come to countries in Europe and contribute. They want to become someone. There is another strong factor that is hardly considered when we think about job opportunities or ways to make a living, and it's much more fundamental. So Europe has become a trademark for respecting human rights. And in the eyes of many migrants, this is what really makes them come here, or this is the big promise why they want to arrive in Europe and not somewhere else. For most migrants that I've met, uh, Europe is a land of rights. First of all, that's the rhetoric governments use when intervening in countries like Iran. They're exposed to the human rights discourse. You would be surprised how clear it is for them that governments intervene in their countries for uh, the advancement and the betterment of human rights. The discourse that is used for political purposes, people really believe in. And that is what drives them to come here. Not jobs, but the promises of the human rights that they're entitled to and that they learn about. For Afghans, then, if they're helped uh, in their own country, why would they not be helped here? And that level of, inf of, of perception is what they have. 
the British, the French, the Americans have helped me in my country, they will surely help me when I come to theirs. And that maybe sounds very naive to a European audience, but that is genuinely what migrants think uh, that they will receive upon arrival. So imagine their shock when they arrive. Instead of having a warm welcome, what they have is a cold shoulder, and what they have is increasingly uh, a negative response to their stay. What that means is increased tensions in Europe, between refugee groups. They start fighting, as we've seen in the case of Afghans and Syrians in Greece, because one group is deemed the good refugee and one group is deemed the undeserving migrant. You could go further and say that even the personal factors influence the decision which country to go to a lot. Nassim told us about a man who basically came to Germany because his cousin has been there before or because, you know, you go to the UK because you've heard from your neighbors that they arrived there safely. So actually, it's much more the mouth-to-mouth -mouth propaganda than analyzing facts which welfare system would provide better. It's very important to remember again that not all Afghans will want to come here, not all Somalis, not all Eritreans, but those who feel like they have no other choice and whose life may be under threat and whose future may be completely compromised, those who aspire to leave uh, will leave, but not all aspire to leave. So we really have to be careful when we tend to put people into boxes or categories like undeserving migrant, deserving migrant, refugee for humanitarian reasons, economic migrant. Because oftentimes root causes are mixed and even more they are intrinsically linked with each other. And it often comes back to this question of human rights. It is a human right to move. It is a human right to leave your own country. It's enshrined in the a declaration for human rights and yet you don't have the accompanying right uh, to enter another country. We see nothing is set in stone and there has to be people that challenge what is the standing practice. So it's good for refugees to refer to their human rights and to make societies evolve because migration is an ongoing phenomenon. If you are eager to watch other parts of our series, please subscribe to our channel and watch the next videos and share it with people who might be interested in these topics too.